The old back porch addition to my house is quirky and angular and gets tons of light. Some minor, but also major, changes to the dining area on the right side have set it on the path to form and function. But for the left side, which was just a laundry closet and another random closet facing each other with the second door to the primary bath in between, we had to go back to the drawing board. Why not add a whole new full bath for guests? Easy enough, right? Right? Hey everybody, welcome back to Reissue. If you're new here, my name is Andrew. I am in the middle of an old home renovation and after almost two years, I finally got one room done. Yay! So when I first started my home renovation process here on this channel, I sort of had the intention that I would be doing one room at a time and kind of focusing on that and then making a video about it. Here we are nearly two years later and I vastly underestimated one, the amount of work, two, how long things would take, and three, how much it would be necessary to kind of jump around from one space to the next, partly because I am living in the house now and living in the space and having all of your stuff around is a way different thing entirely than having an empty, clean slate, if you will. So if you've been here on my channel before, you see that I'm doing a number of projects in different spaces around my house and it's gradually kind of piecing together. So you may have seen various parts of the space coming together in other videos, the wallpaper video, the hidden cabinet video. So today, rather than focusing on the more DIY project side of things like I usually do, I wanted to focus more on the bigger picture and zoom out and talk a little bit about the design process and how I kind of put every Everything together. Working over a long period of time like this during a renovation is challenging because you have to be flexible but you also have to have kind of a vision set up so that things don't change over time in a way that feels like it lacks cohesion if that makes sense. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about the process for the space in the context of how I've been making choices and how I source things and kind of go through element by element and share a kind of behind the scenes look on how everything came together. Before we get started if you like this process Project. If you like this video, hit the like button. By all means, wait to the end of the video to see if you really like it before you hit the like button. And of course, I'd love for you to subscribe. I have a lot of other projects coming up like this. We have one room done out of eight, ten. A lot to do here still. Definitely subscribe if you want to see more projects coming up. Before we start talking about this space specifically, I've been noticing as I design each space in my house, kind of an emerging theme in terms of the process and the different elements of that. So first of those elements is inspiration. I spent a lot of time on Pinterest at the beginning of this process, trying to pull images of things that I liked. Sometimes I see something in a magazine or on Instagram, and maybe pieces that I already have in my collection, furniture, art, just trying to collect kind of a vision of what I like both aesthetically and functionally. I'm a big believer that form and function should go together and ultimately inform each other. So not just thinking about what's gonna look pretty in the space, but how I actually live and what I like and what I need from my space. So that's inspiration. Number two is limitation. So I'm the kind of person creatively where if you gave me a large white room and an unlimited budget that I would just feel like overwhelmed and like cry in corner. Limitations, as tricky as they can be, are kind of where I find a jumping off point of where to get started. So in this space specifically, we're limited on space. It's a really small space relatively limited on budget. I try to mostly thrift or find things at liquidation centers just to cut down those numbers as much as possible. It's a bathroom, so there's a certain amount of expense that's gonna come into it regardless. Also, this room was more or less built entirely from scratch because there wasn't a bathroom here at all. We'll get to that one. And of course, I was somewhat limited, if you want to think of it that way, by the existing elements of the space, the skylight that's there, the general style of the house. There's limitations on what feels appropriate for this kind of house. So taking all of those things into consideration was really important for the space. So we have inspiration, limitation, and third, my favorite, what I like to call the fate factor. Many of you that have watched my channel, you know that I'm super into thrifting, I'm super into vintage, I love to find a deal. And part of that is about budget, of course. Part of it is about the thrill of the hunt. I mean, we all love going to a thrift store and finding something amazing and that little bit of rush you get. But there's also an element when you find something at a thrift store or find something on sale that it feels a little bit like divine intervention where it was like fate put you and this item together. I have found that so often in this room and in other areas of my house where I came across something that ended up being perfect for the space and it sort of feels like a design decision was handed to me so that I didn't have to make every single decision myself, which is the hardest part of a renovation. That and patience, I guess, and money. 
Anyway, the fate factor is fun because you can go in with a plan and have certain ideas, but ultimately it's fun to have this kind of element of chance thrown in that makes your space even better than you thought it could be. So all three of these elements are really present throughout the space. So let's walk through one element at a time and show you how this came together. First is the biggest one, layout. Now, as I mentioned, this room was not here at all before. So this whole space at the back of the house was an addition that was added that used to be the back porch. When I moved into the house, it was kind of an L shape with the dining area straight ahead, which I kept. And then on the left side, there were two closets facing each other with the doorway into the primary bathroom in between. At the time, that was the only full bathroom in the house and there were two doors and it's quite a small space. So it just totally is not very useful. And so closing off that door and making this into a bathroom made sense. One, I gain a little bit of equity. Two, I want another bathroom in my house so that just makes sense. And three, the primary bathroom will be a lot more usable now that we'll be able to reconfigure now that that door will be gone. In planning this bathroom, there were a couple elements that I really wanted to include. One, a toilet. Duh. Two, I wanted a shower tub combo. I could have just gone with the shower and made it a little bit smaller, but I just wanted the option of having a tub. Three, I wanted a vanity with a medicine cabinet that was recessed into the wall. That limited us a little bit because the right wall is an exterior wall, so you can't have anything be recessed into it in that way. I also wanted to have laundry included as a part of the space. This was the designated laundry space before. One of the closets had the washer dryer hookup, so laundry needs to happen here. I had a stackable washer and dryer already, so I just wanted to use that one and incorporate that into the space. Hidden storage was another element that I wanted to include. I know that in the primary bathroom, which is the bathroom that I'll use the most, that I will have limited storage in that space because it has so many windows and doors and because it is small. So I thought this was the place that if I had backups of products or larger products to have it go into this space. So hidden storage, definitely a must. And finally, I wanted to use the existing doors so that I could keep all of the original doors in the house. That didn't work out entirely, stay tuned for that, but that did mean that I was gonna have a wider doorway. Most contemporary homes can have like as small as a 24 inch doorway. And in my older house, most doorways are 36, this one is 34 inches. So not only does that mean that you're eating up more wall space by having a wider door, but the door has to swing somewhere. So that was a big consideration with how we laid out the space as well. So taking all those things into consideration, we arrived at this layout. The door is more or less in the center of the new wall that we added just because it kind of felt the best and felt most functional for the space. Directly across from that is the vanity. Again, partly because it worked out best in terms of how things were laid out, but also it looks nice to look into the room and see kind of the most beautiful element, which I think is the vanity better than looking in on the shower or looking in on the toilet. So it just made sense to have that go straight ahead when you look in. So that left us with the shower tub combo going on one side and the toilet and the stacking laundry going on the other side, just about the measurements of how things worked out. We opted to move the laundry over toward the exterior wall, which is on the right side, because we wanted to put the shower on the left side. Since the ceiling is taller over there and it felt like that would make a better use of the tall space, like no need for the laundry and the toilet to have this massive ceiling and then your shower is like on the lowest part of the ceiling. It just felt like it was gonna make more sense that way. That did leave us with a little bit of a dead space to play around with. There is a world in which I would have liked the dead space to be toward the door so that it could be like a linen closet or like more concealed storage in that sort of sense. But limitations here, due to the placement of the skylight in the room, we couldn't do a wall that would go all the way up to the ceiling there. So it made more sense to go on the other side and do the hidden cabinet storage. More on that in its dedicated video. If you wanna see how that came together, go check out the video now. Enter the vanity. This is another fate factor one. I found this at Goodwill, this beautiful antique waterfall art deco look vanity. Love the antique look, love the dark wood. I really wanted to incorporate somewhere in my house. This room made the most sense. We were in the process of framing out the room at that time. So we did frame in specifically for this vanity. There's a little half wall between the toilet and the vanity, which is there partly because I like a privacy wall by a toilet, but also because the vanity had a lot of damage on the veneer only on the sides. The front was in really good shape, but the sides didn't look good. And so we thought, okay, we'll go ahead and build an enclosure around it, slide it on in there. It'll still look like a freestanding piece of furniture and give us that feel, but the sides will be covered up so you'll never know there's damage. Because the vanity was quite low, we needed to have a bowl sink to sit on top of it to raise a little bit higher. So we got an Allen and Roth one from Lowe's, paid full price for it. I think that's kind of a theme for this room. The major elements were kind of like thrifted or found, but the supplemental elements, like the basics, 
you just pay the price for it, right? The countertop was sourced at my local restore. It's a really long sheet of white solid surface counter. It's kind of going all over my house. So this bathroom has part of it. The half bathroom will also get a little countertop piece. And then my kitchen island is the same surface. I think it's nice to have the same elements kind of present through different parts of the house to bring that element of cohesion. Also, I spend a hundred bucks on it. So might as well use it in as many places as possible and make good use of that deal. Like the sink, the tub was a similar situation. I just got a pretty standard, relatively inexpensive tub at Lowe's. I also decided after the framing went into place that I really did want one of those recessed shelves. So I purchased one of those pre-made recessed shelves as well that you can tile over. That was another Lowe's purchase. And finally, for this space, I didn't really want a shower curtain, partly because I don't know that I really like them aesthetically. Like, I don't know that I've ever come across a shower curtain and been like, wow, that feels like, design, but also because this space is quite small, having a glass door I thought would just kind of open things up visually. So I did find this glass door for half off at a liquidation center. It's perfect for what I needed. I think the black finish feels kind of timeless and crisp and in contrast to the other gold elements, which we'll talk about. So it just was the perfect find. Fate factor. Moving on to tile. The tile was one of the very first things that I purchased before I even moved into the house and we were starting the renovation process. Again, at the liquidation center, I just came across a bunch of things that I liked and just bought a lot for the entire house at that time. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Three different kinds of mosaic tiles, one for each of the bathrooms. I felt like that would kind of unify the house and make it feel cohesive, but also give a little bit of a unique stamp on each room so it doesn't feel basic and boring. That being said, I did buy all the white subway tile. My kitchen is all subway tile. Walls in here are subway tile. Walls in the primary bathroom are gonna be subway tile. Some people may say that it's a boring choice. Personally, I've been trying to think in this process of seeing a little bit further down the line. I know what I like now, but I also know that my tastes change and that styles change. And so given the age of the house and the style of the house, but also longevity, I've been trying to incorporate a lot of really classic elements into the space. So to me, white subway tile may not be the most exotic and designy choice, but when has it ever gone out of style? So the white subway tile that I sourced was, I believe, discontinued. They used to carry it at Lowe's and then they just like offed it everywhere, hence why it was on liquidation. And so even though I was able to get a lot of the standard tile, as well as the baseboard tiles and some of the corner tiles, I was not able to find any bullnose edging tile. I was able to find it in black, hence why the tile is black. Don't get me wrong, I love the black and white look. I already had the black and white look on the floor, so it made sense. And I love that kind of old school, like New York pre-war apartment kind of feel. And I feel like the black really gives that. It was a great design choice, but it probably wasn't one that I would make ordinarily. So again, the kind of limitations of the situation and the fate factor of coming across the black really came into play here and just sort of dropped that in my lap. Having the really strong high contrast black and white tile in the room was a big part of my decision to paint the wallpaper the way that I did. I just felt like the really high contrast of the black and white, I wanted to work with that drama, but also soften it a little bit. So doing the crazy bird wallpaper in a kind of cream and smoky charcoal look rather than a harsh black and white definitely softens the look of the space a little bit, but also the bold graphic feels dramatic. Both the cream and the charcoal are colors that I've used in other parts of my house as well, including this room, which is adjoining to that. So it just made sense to use those colors. Lighting for this space. One of the things that I knew right away is that I wanted to have sconces on either side of a mirror. I think that being well lit in a bathroom is like the most important thing. And I think that generally that comes from sort of a front side light or one of those like ring kind of light things. Like so many hotels that you go into now where they have like the ring of light around the mirror. So flattering, you've never looked better. I wanted that kind of light in this bathroom. So having the sconces on either side, I thought would be good. Both these sconces and the mirror medicine cabinets were all purchased on liquidation at the same time. 50 percent off the retail price. That was another early purchase that I just thought, you know what, I like it, grab it, we'll put it somewhere in the house, it ended up here. The one thing I'll say about the sconces that I chose for this room, they are a kind of like LED type look. I like the light that they give off and they did serve the purpose of giving you that really well lit feeling that's great for like makeup and skincare. I will say that seeing other parts of the house come together, the lighting that I have on my kitchen, 
there is a little bit of like a softer vintage vibe that I'm liking that when you walk into this room and you turn on those lights, it's like, bam, we're on a stage now. So if I'm having a party or something in this space and I wanna create a little bit more atmosphere in that room, I might go in with some candles and just kind of like give it a little softer touch so that it's not quite so like jarring. The exhaust fan for the space, which is not a super sexy topic, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. It is over the shower. I purchased it on liquidation. I opted to go with one that did not have a light in it because I feel like I got burned by too many experiences of like, you know, like the old school ones that had the light in it and it's like the most unflattering light known to man. I'm like, we're not playing that game. But now that I'm in the bathroom, I do kind of wish that I had one of those spotlight ones. I think it would be nice to have a little bit more light over the shower at night. Moving on to fixtures. Bring on the gold, baby. So I'm one of those people that went with the trend of gold. Some people think it's gonna go away. Some people are standing by it. Personally, I think it has a pretty timeless look to it. I think a sort of softer, you know, more true brass kind of gold. We've seen it before, we'll see it again. I think it will stand the test of time. But if it doesn't, fixtures are easy to change. Again, that was a big one for me with tiling the house. I can change the paint, I can change the fixtures, I can change the shower door, I can change the vanity. Those are all relatively simple things. Retiling a room is expensive and time consuming. So keep the tile neutral, be trendy with the gold, I think. For anyone out there that's used gold fixtures in your house, did you find it incredibly difficult to find matching tones of gold for different elements of your space? If so, hit me up in the comments, we can commiserate together because this was tricky. I knew I wanted certain types of fixtures. I knew that I didn't want to spend a fortune. So I was kind of trying to hunt and source things. This was not something that I found on liquidation. All of these items I paid full price for. So I was looking for a good deal but different brands have different shades of gold. So once I ordered my sink faucet and my shower faucet, I got them in the space together and I was like low key a little bit panicked because the wall faucet is quite brassy over the sink, whereas the shower faucet is a lot more almost rose goldy, champagne goldy. It's softer and more pink toned and those two together were just bad. And then on top of that, I had the sconces that were kind of a different shade of gold. And so I was like, oh my God, this is not gonna work. However, I think the conclusion that I've come to is that if you put enough gold colors together, that they all kind of like work and it's fine, especially more antique kind of gold finishes. So when I added the vintage Art Deco hardware to the vanity, and when I added the brass door knocker that I got off my front door to open the hidden storage cabinet, once I started incorporating those like sort of more aged elements of gold, all the golds kind of started to work together and it worked out fine. Let me know what you think. I think it turned out pretty well. So I mentioned earlier in the video that I was gonna use the existing door that was back between the two closets, just bump that whole thing forward. And initially that's what we did. We took out the framing that was there, we bumped the whole thing forward, we reinstalled the door. No problem, worked great, looked good. I knew right away that I wanted to add a transom up above the door, partly because I felt like with this wall coming up so high that it would look stumpy to just have the top of the door be cut off. I think that it needed the extra bit of height, but also because one of the things that I really liked so much about the initial L-shaped space with the addition on the house was how both skylights brought light into the space. So it just felt so bright and so sunny. And I was worried that blocking off this room and making it into a bathroom was suddenly gonna make the space a lot darker. And so I really felt like the transom would allow more of that skylight to come through even when the door is closed just to kind of bring as much light as possible into the space. And I did happen to find the transom at my restore for $10. So no real money spent there. We cut it down a little bit, looks great over the door. And so we framed out the door with some one by sixes that we cut from various wood that we had around the house that we had pulled apart, put back together. And then a couple of weeks ago, I was at the restore and saw this door for $25. It was the 34 inch width that I needed. Big key thing for me was at this point, I really wanted the door in this bathroom to be a natural wood finish. I had thought about painting it, but due to the styling choices of the adjoining room here in the atrium, I just felt like it really needed the warmth of the natural wood on this side of the room. We had started the process of stripping down the existing door, but one, stripping paint is awful, and two, that door was just beat. It was in bad condition, really scratched up, probably would be best to be painted. I think I'm gonna use it in another room in the house and paint it. So when I came across this door and it was already like nearly finished, nearly fully stripped down, I thought, you know, let's see if we can try to make this work in this space. And so I found some inspiration images about doors that had glass in them. We we came up with some plans to kind of add some privacy, add some character with a little water closet sign. I love how it turned out. I think it's amazing. 
The knob that we added came off another door in the house that's gonna be removed entirely. And then we did purchase some interior hardware off of Amazon. For anyone out there that has old doors and like your old hardware doesn't really work, they do make the components that fit inside the door that make everything function well. They're on Amazon, definitely check those out. It was worth getting something new rather than trying to like work forever to make the old things work. They're brass, shiny 80s brass, maybe. If it really bugs me down the line, I can hit it with a little bit of vinegar, I think, and kind of like age it up a little bit. Probably the most time consuming and challenging element when it came to this space in terms of like thought was the laundry cabinet. Initially, I wanted to have it be entirely enclosed all the way up to the ceiling, but again, because of the placement of the skylight, it just was never gonna be possible because any sort of wall that goes up would cut directly in the center of the skylight. So I already knew going in that we were gonna have to build some sort of cabinet that would have a top on it, which is just not my favorite thing because I always think that taking something up to the ceiling makes it feel taller and makes things feel more expansive and more purposeful, whereas just putting a top on a cabinet was kind of like what was there before, honestly, with the closets that were sort of like a weird, hut of sorts. Additionally, putting the toilet and the laundry on the same wall was gonna be a challenge just for dimensions. So we chose to resolve that in a couple of ways. Number one, with the toilet, we were looking for a toilet that was literally as shallow as possible. My parents happened to find a wall-mounted toilet at Lowe's on clearance, just the bowl section. And so fake factor intervened. It's not something that I ever would have purchased on my own because they are quite expensive, but given that it was on clearance, it was affordable. We did have to purchase the wall flush system separately and that was a little bit pricey, but altogether it was worth it to be able to shrink down the depth of the toilet to keep that walking area open. Also, you may have noticed that we built out a little bit of a wall there. The existing wall was not deep enough to be able to accommodate the tank in the wall situation. So we did have to build another wall in front to give it enough depth to be back in there. So it's now like a little like shelf enclosure that works with the wall beside the toilet. So even with the toilet being as shallow as possible, we were still trying to keep the laundry unit as tight as possible. So I ended up thrifting three doors at the Restore, two that were matching that would go on the sides and one different that would go across the top. The two that are on the sides are like the best find ever because they don't, in my opinion, look like a door because of the way the paneling is. It's not like a standard six panel or with the horizontal panels. It really feels like it's a cabinetry wall panel to me. So those went on either side. The third door went across the top and then we built the unit up a little bit and put a shelf in there just to provide some extra storage for towels and things like that. And just to give it a little bit more height and a little bit more majesty in the space, if you will, because it might've been a little bit stumpy if it was just the height of the laundry unit here. I'm super happy with how this looks. The only problem is that in order to turn off the water to the unit or to disconnect the unit for whatever reason, the cabinet has to be taken apart. Um, so here's hoping that that doesn't happen. We might have resolved this problem by putting a longer hose on the dryer so that the whole unit could pull out to be able to get around there. Currently the dryer hose is about this short just so that it could get really close to the wall, which wasn't really even necessary in the end. So it could have been prevented, but it is what it is at this point. My other thing with the washer and dryer is that I really, really, really wanted this to have a door or something on it. And we tried a bunch of things. We tried like an accordion door. We were gonna try some bifold doors, sliding doors, up and down doors. We thought of everything possible and ultimately it has no doors on it because they just do not fit in the space in a way that they could functionally open and have the unit be usable. I'm mostly okay with it, like I've come to terms with it, but I'm not gonna lie, when I first took a shower in the space, I was like in the shower and like having my spa experience with the wallpaper and the skylight and the vanity, and then it's like in my eye line is the washer and dryer. So I have always thought of the idea of putting a curtain across there as being really tacky, but maybe it could be kind of cute and vintage-y. Let me know what you think. Would you put a curtain across it to conceal it entirely, or would you just leave it? Accessorizing this space is pretty minimal. I added a plant, I might add more plants. The noteworthy thing here is the rug, which I found in my grandmother's attic. It is handmade, it is antique, it is beautiful. It's a little beat up, but let's be honest, that's kind of like an aesthetic for rugs these days. It's like a little bit of wear. So we're going with that. The size is perfect for the space, and I think the color really works with some of the redder tones that are happening right outside the room. All right, y'all, I think I've kind of hit it all. If you liked this video, remember you can hit the like button. If you wanna see more like this, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you soon.